Hey folks, this is Jake Davis with your second installment of Bond by Bond, where I'm basically going to just break down the eras of each individual James Bond actor and tell you how I've felt about their personal work. Today is a short video. We're going to be talking about George Lazenby, whose film take, uh, came out in 67 or 67, I think it was 67. Once upon, uh, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, I'm shooting this shortly after midnight. Um, just got my kids to sleep, long work week. I don't have to get up in the morning, so I might as well get this out nearly, I think, a full week now after I did the first one. Um, Lazenby. I gotta say, right off the top, uh, Honor of Majesty's Secret Service is probably, no, it is one of my top three favorite James Bond films. Probably right there at number three. Uh, there's a lot to like about this movie. I mean, you got Lazenby, is absolutely terrific, um, in the role. Possibly the best choice for James Bond we've ever had, as far as just, um, a good match for how it's described in the novels. Um... Tully Savalas, absolutely terrific, is Ernst Stravros Blofeld, easily the most physically intimidating actor to ever play the role. Um, the heavy, the heavy influence the film had had on the 2002 film uh, Triple X, which was, I mean, if you want to get uh, a sense of me and everything I was into at the age of 18. Watch that movie. <laughs> um, Honor Mercy Secret Service is a pretty straightforward movie. And, you know, I guess the most important I thing to talk about the film is the uh, the ending. Which was, uh, you know, trying to change the game. You know, during the course of the film, James Bond is, uh, uh, he, he's undercover as usual. He's made by the Spectre agents, and in the uh, in the ice castle, not in, not a literal ice castle, we'll get that one. We'll get to the ice castle in the in the Brosnan films as as we go. Uh, but he, he's made, he's discovered, he's posing as uh, a Scotsman, kilt and bagpipe, the whole nine yards. And, uh, you know, Bond is dead to rights. They got him. You know, he got, uh, he's out of gadgets. He's, he's injured. He's got nowhere to go. And a girl he meets earlier in the film, uh, I believe played by Diana Rigg. Uh, you know, she, she saves his life. Um, my, uh, Diana Rigg might play a different role in that. 100%. See, I, like I said, I didn't want to, in my last video, I didn't want to go back and revisit all these films. Because uh, eventually I'm definitely going to want to do a retro review about at least one or two of the Sean Connery films. So, you know, this is more of a, you know, all off the cuff. This is how I remember them. I guess I really should have pointed that out more in the first one. And also, also in the first one, I should have pointed out um, Sean Connery's impact on the 1960s in general. You know, the three Bs of the 60s, Beatles, Bond, and Batman. Uh, it was a huge deal. He was a huge deal. Uh, he made the character iconic. It's hard to believe that either Sean Connery or James Bond would be the icons they are without each other. Um, back to Lazenby. So, like, he's dead to rights and he, uh, this girl saves his life. And he falls in love with her, and the film ends with after he's stopped, Blofeld has to be a thwarted specter. <clears throat> he gets married, and, you know, while they're leaving the, the wedding, they're attacked by Blofeld, a uh, henchman with Tommy Gunn, and his, his wife is murdered. And like the closing moments of the film is him holding his dead wife, going, it's okay, we have, we have all the time in the world. It is a deeply... Deeply heartbreaking ending that there's just no other Bond film can compare to the shock and the emotion and the just oh, you know, hard hitting effect of, uh, of of that ending. It's, it's amazing. And then, you know, there's other positive things to talk about. There's a great, several great sequences in it, including a terrific final uh, fist fight on a runaway bobsled uh, between uh, 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 Blofeld and uh, Bond. 
like I said, the film was it was a big, and I've always suspected had to have been a heavy influence on Triple X. I mean, as far as I know, no one like Rob Cohen or Vin Diesel or no one from Sony has ever confirmed that. But I mean, it's like obvious to me. Uh, I mean, I don't like a lot of the tongue-in-cheek nature and the humor, like a almost fourth wall breaking kind of stuff, like. In the opening bit, Lazenby looks right into the camera and goes, I bet this never happened to the other guy. And then there's that, you know, Lazenby is the only actor ever to be nominated for Golden Globe for playing James Bond. Mind you, this was uh, the category for best breakout performance, something he kept going up into the early 80s. <coughs> uh, Eddie Murphy, I'm kind of a little congested, excuse me. Uh, Eddie Murphy may have been really cold here today in Florida out of absolutely nowhere. Because Florida, it's a bipolar state. Um, but uh, Eddie Murphy won that award too. He may have been the last or one of the last guys to ever win that award for a best breakout performance for 48 Hours. Great performance, great movie. Um, it, it just, you know, I gotta say, but the thing is with Lazenby, I don't really think he got a bit of, of that much of a fair rap because, and this might have a, have a deeper meaning in, in films. Uh, the Replacement, because I was, was thinking about this and researching this a little bit, and I might, I might, I'm sure there's exceptions to the rule, but it seems to be this almost open acceptance to just shit on the guy who uh, takes over the part after the beloved original actor has the role. I mean, Val Kilmer, Andrew Garfield, Brandon Routh, uh, I had another one in my head just a second. Ald Alden Ehrenreich for Han Solo. Uh, it, there may be something to the concept that, you know, nobody wants this character to be recast. So the guy who gets the roles is just going to get gonna get a, a shitload of shit. <laughs> um, even if they're fine. I mean, Andrew Garfield is terrible, but Lazenby is, is okay. I mean... You, you do your own, do your research. Tell me if I miss somebody who I might be uh, not pointing out here. Uh, if this is, or even what's the exception to the rule, we'll call it. We'll call we'll call it the Lazenby effect. What the hell is rolling down here? One of my kids' toys, probably. Anyhow, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm actually just stretching this for time because I only have one fucking movie to talk about. <laughs> Up next is Roger Moore, the big dog, the guy who's. Uh, played James Bond longer, and up until, like, almost down to the day, the nitty-gritty with it, um, Daniel Craig will surpass Sir Roger Moore as spending the most time with the character, as the character. Um, Sean Connery doesn't really count because he quit James Bond twice before he finally retired from the character. Um, but yeah, I am looking forward to the Roger Moore movies because then... We get into not only some of Bond's more memorable uh, villains, but some of the more insane wackiness and some of the better theme songs, to be 100% honest with you. Uh, anyhow, I uh, hope you all like this video. Like, share, subscribe, do all the wonderful wacky stuff. I'm trying to get this decorated. Uh, this room is really... You don't see what's over here, but it's madness over here. You just get a taste of the insanity on this end. I tried to decorate this bit a little bit, but you can't even see it. I'm gonna pull out my Pennywise eventually, but we got Daryl Ditson holding for it right now, so no walkers fucking with this compound. Anyhow, I'm Jake Davis, and I'll catch you on the fly.